All right, folks, welcome back to Flatirons Tuning. I'm here in the shop, and as we've kind of alluded to and promised uh, in our, in our uh, community section on YouTube, I've got in front of me a Mona differential taken apart next to a Cusco differential. Um, we, we like both of these. We've used a ton of Cusco uh, differentials in the past. We're now using a Mona differential, and there's some really interesting differences that, that the Mona differential offers, and so I wanted to make a video kind of explaining what is, what is the difference between these two? What is the special sauce that Moten has? Um, and we're gonna dive into it. Before we do, just wanna say, you know, thanks very much for your support as always. And the best way to support this channel to help us keep coming back and making content like this for you is to head over to flatirontuning.com. Anything that we might have there for you, um, that support is gonna go a long way to help us keep coming back and making this content for you. We also have a member section now on our YouTube channel and we're gonna try and keep making more and more uh, original content there for you, some short videos, behind the scenes stuff. And uh, we're going to try and give you early access to a lot of these videos as much as we can uh, for the videos, the podcast, that sort of thing. So again, your support in the members area really helps us uh, keep coming back and making this content for you as well. So without further ado, let's, let's dive into these differentials. Um, for us, Cusco is, is kind of the tried and true solution when it comes to putting in a differential. There's a lot of different options. They've got a lot of different applications, front, rear, you know, all, all sorts of different um, applications for whatever you might need. We've been using these in a rally car for, for close to 20 years now. We, we've been using them in our Pikes Peak car for a good while. They've always worked well for us. They're tried and true, tested, and we, we really like them. But we've now switched to a Mona differential. Now that we've gone to the Mona sequential with the Pikes Peak car. And these, these Mona differentials, I've knew, known about them for a while, um, but there are some really interesting differences with the Mona diff. And that's why I want to make this video kind of explain what the difference is between this diff and where um, you, know, you might want to switch from a Cusco to a Modena, depending on the application. Now, these are both clutch type LSDs. So like functionally, they're exactly the same. You basically have you know, uh, friction disks and, and uh, steels or, or uh, clutch disks stacked. Uh, and that is what, what provides the lock from left to right. Uh, you have a center section with, with a cam so that uh, the planetary gears, if, if there's a wheel speed differential, that's going to lock the clutch discs up um, and you know, give you the lock and the performance that, that you would expect from an uh, Lona slip diff. Very, very, these two diffs are very, very similar. Um, and it's, it's the subtle differences in the construction that really start to show you where there's a little bit of a difference here. Um, you know, when you have the clutch discs in the Cusco diff, they look very, very similar. In fact, almost identical uh, between the, the inside and the outside. And then in the Mona diff, there's a distinct difference between uh, the clutch disc and the steel disc. In, in the terms of construction, um, these are both, you know, the Cusco I'd say is, is, is for motorsports use and for street use. Mona is really designed around motorsports use 100%. And uh, we're going to get to the clutch disc and what, what separates the, the Mona here in a minute. But you, know, you can tell with the Mona that there's a little bit like larger planetary gears. The, the supports uh, for the planetary gears are much more robust than in the Cusco. Um, the, the oiling passages in you know, the, the clutch disc themselves, in uh, the shafts that support the planetary gears for the differential, there's, there's definitely visual differences for um, you know, allowing for oil flow with the Mona diff over the Cusco diff. Again, there's nothing wrong with the Cusco diff. We run these for years, they're very reliable, but you can start to see these differences. So <clears throat> when you're looking at the discs in the Cusco versus the discs in the Mona, here, here's the analogy to think of. The discs in the Cusco diff, think of two brake rotors, and where you're getting the lockup is you're taking the two brake rotors and you're squeezing those two rotors together. It's a very similar material. And again, like visually, you look at them and it's basically the same material. Now in the Mona diff, their clutch discs, what their, what their unique proprietary thing is, is that they're applying a friction material to the clutch discs. You can see that. It's, whereas the Cusco diffs, they have the grooves in them for, for oiling, but they feel very similar. They're, they're smooth. I mean, it, it, it really is analogous to, say, a slotted brake rotor. For the clutch discs in the Modena, it's actually rough. It's like, a, like an emery paper or, or even like a light sandpaper. It, it is definitely rough. And then their steels are smooth. And so you, it, the analogy here is this is like applying a brake pad to a brake rotor. You have a lot more friction uh, between the clutch disc and the steel in the Mona diff. And that's kind of what, what the special sauce is or what sets off the difference in behavior between the Mona diff and the Cusco diff. Thing, the biggest factor here is or to keep in mind with 
something like a Cusco differential. And this would be the same for like CAS and, um, and other similar, similar diffs like that. Your lockup and the, the ability to lock the two wheels together is going to come from that coefficient of friction between those two surfaces, two similar surfaces. So that comes from the preload and then from that wheel speed differential. So because that's going to move the planetaries and kind of move the cams out and squeeze the clutch packs. So you need more uh, squeezing force, if you will, to get those discs to lock together and to cause the lockup. With Modena, their special sauce is having this, this rough surface on the clutch disc because the coefficient of friction is much higher. So you do not need as much preload, especially, to get the same locking force. And you're going to get a faster ramp up with wheel speed differential because you've got a higher coefficient of friction. Um, it's worth mentioning, so Modena Engineering has been around for about 20, 25 years. They're based out of Australia. And where they started out was working with you know, high-level motorsports people like Possum Born. Um, and developing the products for a very high level of motorsport and then kind of they've distilled that down to you know the, the enthusiast level where, where we now have access to this. So they did, they've done a lot of R&D with, with really top level drivers to figure out what works best and all of that R&D goes into the products that they have for each specific application like for the Subarus. Um, there's a lot of people that have been running Modena sequentials and Modena differentials in rally cars for many many years. Um, as another example, Tommy Mackinnon, his European company is one of the main distributors for, for Modena in Europe. Um, the guys at Roger Clark, Gobstopper 1 and 2, they were running Modena uh, sequentials and, and diffs. Uh, you know, again, there's a lot of people that are kind of like the pointy end at the high level that have been using Modena. And just kind of word has, has come out and, and gotten out and these products are now more and more available to us as enthusiasts. And so there's a lot of R&D that goes into these. Um, the other thing is, is that you know, the ramp angles that Mona is using are a little bit different than a lot of the, the Japanese main differentials. Um, they do have different options for the center sections, but again, they've done a lot of development for these. And so they kind of, you're starting off at what should be a pretty high level, uh, and then you can refine it from there as need be. So like again, in, in the case of this R180 differential, it is a two-way differential. But if you look at the Mona diff compared to the Cusco diff, the ramp angles are pretty significantly different in the Mona diff compared to the Cusco diff. And that means that also the way that the, that the, the lockup is going to build with wheel speed differential, it's, it's going to be different with, with the Mona compared to the Cusco. You might be able to swap out the center section of the Cusco diff to get similar behavior. But again, the clutch discs with the friction uh, material, that's one of the things that is just completely unique to the Mona. And probably at this point, one of your first questions is, is what our question was is, okay, well, what is the service life? How often are you going to have to take this out, rebuild it, service it, that sort of thing? Well, fortunately, because there's a lot of race teams that have experience using this, we have a pretty good picture of what to expect with this diff, which is, you know, depending, you know, on the use and application, you should be able to get about 100 to 120 hours use out of a differential uh, before it would have to go in and be serviced and or possibly rebuilt. Um, and then if, if you're just, you know, doing more track days and, and that sort of thing versus like, you know, racing on track for, you know, hours at a time. You know, there are people that have gotten, you know, multiple years, you know, say maybe even eight to 10 years out of a, out of a diff with, you know, less consistent race use before I'd have to go in there and be serviced. And it's also worth noting that uh, because you have the friction material on the clutch disc that digs into the steel disc, a lot of times, uh, at least what, what Mona told us is the first time you would need to go in and, re and re uh, the first time you need to go in and service the diff, really it's the steels that would just need to be replaced and usually the friction discs will outlast the steels by a long way. Um, so you just go in there, put in new steels, diff should be fine again and then you probably get another you know, couple of seasons out of the diff before you'd have to go in there and possibly, possibly replace the clutches and the steels. Um, also, because of the way that this, the diff is progressive and it works very consistently, um, usually you as the driver should basically get a feel for like what, what is normal for the diff, how it normally works, and you'll feel when the diff is, is not able to bite as much because there's that much wear. Um, and then that would be a, a tip off to go, go through uh, the diff and, and have it serviced and rebuilt, that sort of thing. Um, okay, so with all of that being said, let's go back and just kind of highlight all right, when would you want to consider a Mona diff? When might you need a Mona diff? And when would a Cusco diff be fine? Because again, we've, we've run Cusco diffs for years. They're, they're tried and true and reliable, and they work well for many, many applications. Um, to me, the real, the real deciding factors here, or, or the key details, would be um, power, 
uh, tires, tires used, type of racing done, and it's especially if you're seeing any kind of issues or inconsistencies in performance with something like a Cusco diff, that's where you'd want to look at a Modena. So probably, you know, power-wise, if you're, if you're in the 500 horsepower and above range, um, then that's where you might, you might run into some of these issues where, you know, you're, the Cusco is just not holding as well as you would like. Uh, or behaving as consistently as you would like, and that's where something like the Modena would come in. Um, probably for street tires, if you're running street tires a lot, the Cusco is going to be fine for you. Um, really, the Modena, because it is a motorsports diff, is designed around track use, racing, and using race spec tires like Hoosiers, Hoosier slicks, that sort of thing. Um, on street tires, it's very possible that there's just enough lockup that, like, it, you would actually not be ideal for street tires versus. Uh, you know, because this is designed around running race slicks. Um, and then for type of racing done, like, uh, you know, if you're doing a lot of long stint racing, like endurance racing where you're on track for multiple hours, again, the materials used, the oiling system that is built into the Modena diff, it is designed around, you know, long-term endurance use. There's a lot of Porsches that have won races and, and whatnot using the Modena diffs in, you know, 16-hour, 12-hour, 24-hour races. Whereas like the Cusco diff, you might, like if you start to run into um, issues where you're having to service the Cusco diffs more than you would like um, in, in running those, those more endurance type events, that's where something, again, like the Modena would come in. Um, yeah, so it's really, that's what it really comes down to. And that's why we've made the switch. And uh, we really, so far, we really like the results. We want to keep playing with it more, uh, seeing what it's all about, what the differences are. Um, yeah, we'll just... We'll just keep, keep using it in the Pikes Peak car, keep doing more testing, and we'll come back and let you know. But there's, there's just not a whole lot of information out here on these Mona differentials, and that's why we wanted to make the video. So you guys would ha hopefully have a better understanding of what goes into these, what the differences are, and you know what, what the differences are in something that is more like a street and track oriented diff versus a full-on full motorsports oriented differential. So that's, uh, that's what we got. So hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully you like the video. Thanks for your support as always, and until next time, stay tuned to Flatirons Tuning.